I welcome everyone and thank everyone for being here for our Veterans Day program. At this time, we will recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. We'll have an invocation by Chaplain Roger Verley. A prayer for, a prayer for veterans. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with brave men and women who are willing to defend our freedom. May your protection and grace surround them each day. Let your healing hand be upon those who suffer the wounds and injuries. May those who have made the ultimate sacrifice rest forever in your holy presence. Comforts the families who mourn and are left to remember the precious lives of their loved ones. Help us to honor and support them ever. Be mindful of each sacrifice made on behalf of the American people, sons, daughters, husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, and friends. Amen. I welcome all veterans, their families, and everyone else in attendance at this Veterans Day celebration to honor all those who have served our country. As commander of the American Legion Post 113, I welcome you and hope that you feel free to ask any questions you might have about ours and other veterans organizations, who we are, what we do, what's available to those who are veterans. The most prominent in our area are the American Legion, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Disabled American Veterans, and the Vietnam Veterans of America. If you see a veteran on the street, you probably won't know they're a veteran unless they have a hat or a t-shirt suggesting that they served. It could be your neighbor, your mailman, or even your teacher. Most times, they don't actively advertise the fact but when they asked, they reply with pride that they are. Veterans are a close-knit group whose service and uniform has created a desire, oftentimes to be with other veterans. They support one another through comrade, concern, and care. As a veteran, you learn how to have someone else's back. Having served, Veterans have been part of something bigger than themselves. Experiencing life and understanding the need to serve others, to accept responsibility and go forward without being asked. At this time, um, Bruce will read a program. A veteran. I am what others didn't want to know. I went where others feared to go. My training in violence was nothing new, but I did well what they were afraid to do. I don't hate those who refuse to go. I did it for my country, not for show. An eternal loneliness beyond that pale was my certain reward should I fail. I've seen terror's deathly face I feared to go, but kept the pace. And wrapped in the cold sting of fear, I fought for buddies and those I held dear. I've known sweet love and a moment's kiss, and I wished for all the world I could stay with this. But I was committed, and I knew not my lot, to live out death and dangers best forgot. Shrouded deep in the stink of death, I've cried aloud and tried to catch my breath. While my soul screamed out to God where I'd been to just once more escape the living pain again. Going where others wouldn't go, knowing what others wouldn't know. I am the stuff of legends and lores. I am a veteran of my nation's wars. I ask only a moment of your day, a moment of silence out of the way. I ask only that you honor the debt of freedom bought. Don't forget.
Okay, Quentin Brunsvold. I'm just going to sing a couple verses of America the Beautiful. And please, uh, please feel free to sing along if you'd like. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. America, America, may God thy gold refine, till all success be nobleness, and every gain divine. I'm very impressed with somebody over here, wow. Dale, next, next year you know that somebody over here can also sing. And you didn't do too bad yourself. I just want to thank Dale Schroeder for really kind of taking it on himself and Ken Versable to uh, make this happen. It's very small and quaint, and we have a lovely place to do this. It's really wonderful to have this turn out for this, especially with the snow on the ground and whatever. But uh, Dale asked me to also read this, this poem, and it's a little bit lengthy, but it's got a really good meaning. It's called Lest We Forget. He was getting old and paunchy, and his hair was falling fast, and he sat around the legion telling stories of the past, of a war that he once fought in and the deeds that he had done. In his exploits with his buddies, they were heroes, every one. And though sometimes to his neighbors his tales became a joke, all his buddies listened quietly, for they knew whereof he spoke. But we'll hear his tales no longer, for old Joe has passed away, and the world's a little poorer, for a veteran died today. He won't be mourned by many, just his children and wife, for he lived an ordinary, very quiet sort of life. He held a job and raised a family, going quietly on his way, and the world won't note his passing, though a veteran died today. When politicians leave this earth, their bodies lie in state, while thousands note their passing and proclaim that they were great. The politician's stipend and the style in which he lives are often disproportionate to the service that he gives. While the ordinary veteran, who offered up his all, is paid off with a medal and perhaps a pension, small. It is not the politicians with their compromise employees who won for us the freedom that our country now enjoys. Papers tell of their stories from the time they were young, but the passing of a veteran goes unnoticed and unsung. Is the greatest contribution to the welfare of our land some jerk who breaks his promise and cons his fellow man? Or the ordinary fellow who in times of war and strife goes off to serve his country and offers up his life? Should you find yourself in danger with your enemies at hand, would you really want to want some cop out with this ever waffling stand? Or would you want a veteran, his home, his country, his kin, just a common veteran who would fight until the end? He was just a common veteran and his ranks are growing thin, but his presence should remind us we may need his likes again. For when countries are in conflict, we find the veteran's part is to clean up all the troubles that the politicians start. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Perhaps just a simple headline on the paper that might say, Our country is mourning. A veteran died today. And normally we don't try to mix the holidays up, but this past year, for obvious reasons, we were unable to uh, have our Memorial Day ceremony that we would normally have. So we're going to take this opportunity as we gather here to remember all the veterans that we lost this past year. And so we're going to play the role of the dead. 
or we're, I'm going to read the role of the dead. And this is from January 1st, 2020 to present day that we have record of. Marvin Kyle. Thomas G. Musser. Leonard J. DeVos. Robert C. Newman. Lawrence J. Neighbor Jr. Clarence McLaughlin. Charles Killius Jr. James S. John. Norman F. Shepoyster. Robert J. Brewers. John J. Bicey. Robert G. Medetsky. Gerald Monsrud. Elvin H. Evers. Wayne A. Core. Lawrence H. Loaji. Warren P. Kornstrom. Joseph A. Lamott. Myron Sustacek. Lawrence A. Filtered Sr. And last but certainly not least, Terry Bladholm. This concludes our program, so thanks to everyone for attending the Veterans Day program. Thank you.